Hey, it's Adam with the Backpack Theory Podcast, where we unpack past experiences to help define a better future. And today we're going to be talking about why reading is such an impactful thing in your life. I personally looked at reading for years as something that didn't really benefit me. I thought I've got plenty of information whenever it comes to conversations with my friends. I've got plenty of information whenever it comes to watching TV. I've just got information whenever it comes to TikTok or wherever else I get my news or information. And so I never really viewed reading as something that was very valuable. It was only about three to four years ago that I really started actually picking up re reading as a habit as I entered my 30s. First, I kind of started off with very basic reading whenever it came to just easy to digest self-help books. Then I kind of started adding a little bit more complicated books to kind of like broaden my horizons. There was a very common theme with people that were in my life that I saw being very successful, finding a lot of peace, living a very fulfilling life. And those people did a lot of intentional reading. Uh, I watched some documentaries whenever it came to Bill Gates, whenever it came to Warren Buffett, whenever it came to Elon Musk. And all of them, one of the very common denominators that they had was reading as well as journaling, exercise, diet, but reading was really something that is very commonly expressed. So what is reading exactly and what does that might look like for you? There's different ways to consume books. The first way is by actually reading a printed book. The second way would be reading off of a Kindle or a screen. And the third way would be an audio book. I personally am a big audio book listener. I listen to most of my stuff on a higher speed, normally like one and a half to two times the regular speed. Now, the pros whenever it comes to audiobooks is the fact that you can listen to more information faster. The con whenever it comes to it is if you're not writing down the things that you're actually learning, you can actually really withhold yourself from actually retaining the information. The same thing goes with podcasts. If you listen to a podcast, but you don't apply or don't write out thoughts, then it can be really hard for you to retain the information. Whenever it comes to reading from on a screen, it's great, but one of the issues is, is that you can overly stimulate your actual sight by doing so, and it can actually affect the amount that you actually can recall the information. Print is by far the highest recommended way to read books because you can highlight, you can write notes on it, and this is all actually from a 2016 study by the Bloomberg University at Penn School of Business. And uh, in that study, they really kind of compared those three different methods. And that was what they came up with, basically, is that audiobooks and print are very common. Reading on a Kindle can actually prohibit you whenever it comes to recalling that information. I thought that was really interesting. Me personally, I'm still going to stick to audiobooks because I can absorb information a whole lot faster. Now, how does reading really change your life? Well, one really interesting research topic is the fact that reading actually can help you whenever it comes to your social cognitive abilities. This was done by a University of Oxford study. And uh, in that study, it actually talks about reading fiction can actually really help you whenever it comes to relating to others. There's uh, something called Tom which is the theory of mind. This was established in 1978 by Primack and Woodruff. It was a study that talked about the fact that Tom is basically the theory of mind. It's the ability to think about others through thoughtful feelings. Like it actually allows you to relate to people. And in this study by the University of Oxford, it actually talks about the fact that when you are reading these sci-fi novels, it allows you to really Picture yourself in someone else's shoes and empathize with them. So from a professional perspective, from a relational perspective, reading literally helps you relate to other human beings. And in a society today where we really have a hard time connecting to others, that is a great skill to add by reading. Um, another thing that reading does for you is actually it lowers your anxiety. There was a study by the University of Sussex and they took a bunch of different things that you could do through exercise, watching TV, journaling, all these different things. And then they ranked them based off of how much anxiety was actually decreased. 
and reading came in at 68% of your anxiety can be decreased if you stop and read. It was the highest ranked activity because it forces you to slow down. It forces you to take a break. It forces you to reflect. And it puts you in a position to where you can actually learn and understand more information. Again, understanding other people, being able to empathize with people. So it's a great way to actually lower your anxiety in an anxiety-ridden society that we live in. The other thing that it does is it actually helps lower your cognitive decline. So dementia and Alzheimer's is rampant. I mean, I think that we're looking at having 5 million cases a year for people over 70 over the next decade. There was a study that was done in 2021 that was published on Neurology uh, Magazine. And in it, it actually shows that by reading, it can actually delay the onset by five years or more if you continuously are reading. Because the way that they referred to reading and what it does is it literally increases your cognitive reserve. Imagine the cognitive reserve is basically like your library in your head. It's where your information is stored. And by reading, it can actually allow your cognitive reserve to increase. So reading can literally help you whenever it comes to your cognitive decline as you get older, which is absolutely phenomenal, kind of mind-blowing, no pun intended. Another reason that reading is so helpful is that your brain is basically like a muscle. Right. So like it's an organ, but it functions somewhat like a muscle whenever it comes to our neuro pathways and the strengthening of our neurons and these different connections in our brain. And the phenomenal thing is, is that whenever you want to exercise, you want to grow a muscle. What do you do? You lift. And actually, not only do you lift, you lift harder. You lift more weight to actually increase your muscle memory over time. Reading's very similar. If you want to learn a new language, if you want to learn new tools, if you want to learn about financial gain or wealth or whatever it is that you want to learn, if you read harder books and harder topics and move outside of your comfort zone, it's exercising your brain. It literally is increasing your ability to actually grow and empathize and understand and relate to other situations, which again, in a world today where we're getting all of this fast information, if you just slow down and read, it can help you out tremendously whenever it comes to that. Another thing that it helps you with, and this is a study that they did with 5,635 participants in the 2016 issue of Social Science and Medicine. It was done by the Yale School of Public Health. They uh, took all of these people and they, they, they analyzed them over 12 years. And out of those 5,635 participants, the people that read consistently, they actually lowered their rate by 20% whenever it came to risk of death. That's unbelievable. Directly correlated to reading. And so those are just some of the reasons that reading can really help you. Now, the last episode, whenever it came to talking about why, is we talked about why journaling was so important. Reading is the next step in that. If you start journaling and you start getting these thoughts out, the next step is like go and find a book and related to where you're stuck. There's so many resources. There's so much information out there. And so many times we just want to scroll and get a quick hit without understanding full context. I think the more that we slow down, the more that we actually intentionally choose our information, the more that we look to grow, the less that we think that we know everything the more that we will actually evolve and the more success in life, depending on what your definition of success is, will actually develop. You know, I think that in society today, we've got so much information at our fingertips. We've got so much television. We've got so much information. It's really easy just to tune out. The one common thing whenever it came to all these studies that does not help you whenever it comes to cognitive, your, your library, is watching television. It actually can decrease it. Now, there is a certain amount of television that you can watch and consume. There's a certain amount of social media that you can consume to where you can still have healthy levels. But if you go in and you read, you go in, you journal, and you find these healthy activities to actually increase your brain power, those negative things that you want to do whenever you just want to tune out don't affect you nearly as much. So if you're not a reader, if you've thought about taking up reading, I strongly encourage you just pick up a book. Me personally, 
I try to read every day. Right now, my goal is to read 40 books this year. I'm on book number seven. And I can't tell you the amount of insight, the amount of knowledge, and the amount of wisdom that it has actually brought to me. And whenever you look at all these people that have really transformed the world, and they all have a common habit of reading, why not? Why not slow down a little bit? Why not go look at other perspectives? Why not allow your imagination to run wild a little bit? Why not go seek some information that you don't have? Why not get a little bit better at whatever industry you're in? Because ultimately, there is an astronomical amount of knowledge and wisdom in the world. And instead of just getting a quick snippet or a quick swipe, I encourage you, go find a book. Go change your life. Go strengthen your mind and watch what happens as you move forward the, through this life. Again, this is Adam, Backpack Theory Podcast. Thanks for tuning in to my wife today. I do want to give a shout out to a clinic that I actually went to here recently. It's called Eros Men's Health Clinic here in Oklahoma City. I have been someone that for years have put off getting comprehensive blood paneling. I've done a lot of podcasts with people that have talked about different health effects and what's going on in our world today whenever it comes to what we're consuming. And the guys over at Eros uh, Men's Health Clinic here in Oklahoma City really take their time to sit down with men and go over all their labs and look at functional ways that we can actually change our lives. I went in and I thought I was in, I mean, you know, I work out four days a week. I'm in muscularly wise, like I'm in pretty good shape. You know, I've decreased my weight. So I was in pretty good shape and I went in whenever they took my blood panels, there were so many little tiny things that I had not observed or not looked into that were revealed to me just by doing a simple test. So I encourage you, if you've ever thought about going and getting your testosterone tested or go to see what maybe you're not inputting in your life to maximize your output, go check out the guys over at Eros Men's Health Clinic and see whether or not they have some information that could really help you transform your life and really put you into the next level whenever it comes to your personal development. Thanks for tuning in. I appreciate you. Until next time on the Backpack Theory Podcast, it's Adam. See you later.